So we've done quite a bit of work in our application thus far, and we're going to want to start thinking about how we're going to build the app for deployment. Uh, currently, we've just been kind of working in our development environment by uh, typing au run, perhaps adding a watch flag. And then, you know, some stuff kind of scrolls across the screen here, and we go to localhost 9000, and we get our application, and we're happy with that. But so what's really going on here is actually if I go into my Aurelia project folder and I go into my tasks folder, well, okay, so we see this run.js and I can open this and realize that what we're doing is we're using gulp to exercise uh, a series of commands here. Uh, and the first one is build. So what we're doing is we're actually using Aurelia's build command to bundle our application and actually deploy it on port 9000. And you can kind of infer that just by kind of exploring uh, this Aurelia uh, run JS file. Uh, but so what we're basically going to be doing as we want to build this for production deployment is we are going to want to use Aurelia's uh, build command, except we're going to want to specify the production environment, or if you're using a staging server, you can specify staging as well. And uh, so what we have is we can see up here is build.js, and we can see the gulp commands, and it's worthwhile to kind of go through this. In fact, we're going to be uh, editing it a little bit down the road to um, fully make our application work. But you can see uh, there's a few processes like transpiling and processing the markup, processing CSS. Uh, that happens to to kind of bundle everything and get it ready to go and what's actually happening i'm going to close this down now is our app is being bundled if we close our aurelia project folder and then open this scripts folder that we haven't really uh, dived into at all we actually have this app bundle.js and this vendor bundle.js and this is actually bundling all of our app code that we've written in this app bundle.js and all of the, uh, the packages that we're using, the, the vendor provided uh, script that we're using is being bundled in this vendor bundle.js. So when you're actually running your application, these are uh, the JS files that are being referenced. So what you see now is that we see our app bundle in this uh, kind of very readable format, but that is certainly not desirable for deployment so what I'm going to show you is that if we go into our command line and type au build, but this time I'm going to give it a flag of environment and say that we want the production environment. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell it to build. And so this is not going to put it on port 9000 or anything. It's just going to uh, bundle our application and vendor code uh, as we spe specified. But uh, instead of being very human readable, what it's going to be is quite uh, minified, which is kind of good for obfuscating the code uh, base a little bit. So if I go back into that scripts folder and look at app bundle.js, yeah, this is going to be pretty hard for uh, someone to kind of comb through if they want to see what's going on your, in your application and uh, vendor bundle as well. So. Great, so we did that uh, application uh, building. So we've got our scripts here. Well, what else do we need? The only other thing we need is our index file here because of course this is our uh, single page application. This is our index file. So it's even got a reference here to our vendor bundle. So if I go back out, uh, actually I'm going to open my file explorer now and go to my blog start folder here. What I'm going to do is just take this index file, uh, this index.html file and my scripts folder. I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to go up a level and I'm going to create a new folder here called, I don't know, I'll call it production. And this is going to basically simulate our production environment here. And I'm just going to put our index and scripts folder in it. So I'm going to go back to my command line, uh, go into my production folder. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate a production environment. So I'm just basically going to spin up a uh, very basic HTTP server. Uh, if you don't have something installed, you can 
do npm uh, install uh, http dash server uh, is a pretty good one and you install it globally since i already have that installed i'm just going to use it so i can say http server and just do the ampersand and what this is going to do is spin up a uh, local http server and i can access it at localhost on port 8080 so i'm going to do that now instead of port 9000 i'm going to go to port 8080 Okay, awesome, here we are. So I'm in my, my single page application here. It's been totally bundled and now I can kind of use it. And what we're doing here is we're not using the Aurelia CLI, but we're just, you know, this is just on a basic web server and uh, it's still functioning as you might expect. So we're pretty happy about that. So we're done, this is perfect, right? Well, actually the answer is no, I'm sure or you may or may not notice that uh, our navigation bar here is not looking correct. It's, it has the reference to our translations, but it doesn't actually have our translations. If I switch to, to the French language, it doesn't translate. Interestingly enough, it translates our uh, dates here, but it doesn't translate the header. If I do a new post, yeah, this is all ugly. It's not translating anything. And this is important to remember. We haven't actually told uh, if we go back to our application, we haven't told the Aurelia build process that we need to bring our translation files uh, in with the build. And we need to do that if we want to actually be able to reference them uh, when we actually build our application. So this is when we can kind of get into talking about modifying our Aurelia build process a little bit to suit our needs. If I go to our tasks under Aurelia project, and I go to build.js. Well, we transpile, we process markup, we process CSS, um, we copy files. Well, what if we also decided that we want to uh, process our locales? So we have a, uh, where we're getting this process markup function here is from this process markup JS file. So I'm gonna open that, which is also in tasks. And okay, so we're using a gulp process and we are getting the source from uh, project.markupprocessor.source. Project is taken from our Aurelia JSON file. So let's go to our Aurelia.json. Let's find the, uh, actually it's just down below here. Okay, so we see markup processor. Uh, right now it's saying that we are going to um, process the HTML markup. So maybe we do something to say, hey, we want to include also our locales. So maybe we'll call it locales processor. Uh, we know that our file extension for this is uh, JSON. As if I go to, if I go to my locales folder, yeah, it's nav.json, postform.json. So yeah, we wanna say file extension JSON. Uh, the source here is source slash locales slash, then we have uh, any sort of locale, and then we have any sort of namespaced JSON file. And that's really it for what we have to specify. So now in our Aurelia.json uh, configuration file, we've specified the information about the locales processor. So now we actually have to create that process within our task folder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply go to the uh, process markup.js file. I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna create a new file within my tasks folder. I'm gonna paste this. And what I'll say is that this is going to be our process locales process. And we are going to use locales processor.source, and now we have this actually referenced within our Aurelia.json file. And great, this is actually all we need to do. And so now I can just similarly name it process locales.js. And so now that's a process that we've specified within our tasks folder. So we're almost there, uh, we're getting there. So we have specified the information in Aurelia.json, we've created a custom 
task to process those locales. So now what we have to do is within our build.js file, again, this is what we're actually calling when we say au build, we are going to want to import our process locales from process locales, which is the JS file that we just created. And then what we can easily do is that within this parallel process here, we can, instead of just processing the markup in CSS, we can also process our locales. And that's actually all we need to do to make sure that we're also processing uh, the JSON files that are within our locales folder. And what's going to happen here is, uh, and I'm not going to dive in really to show you, but what's going to end up happening is now that we've said this, our locales JSON files are going to end up bundled in our app bundle within our script folder. So let's go back to our command line. And I'm going to, actually I'll just open up a new tab here. And we'll go into our blog start folder. And once again, I'm going to do a u build and I will give it an environment of production. And we'll see that we can actually see process locales uh, being conducted within this build process. So I'm just going to make sure that it finishes writing our bundles here, our app bundle and our vendor bundle. And now that it's finished, what I can do is go back to my file explorer and I'll go over to blog start. Again, I'm going to grab index and I'm going to grab the scripts folder. Go ahead and copy that and hop on over to my productions folder. I'll delete these uh, index and scripts. I'll go ahead and paste the new index file and scripts folder. And I'll go back to my command line and within my production folder, again, I will start my HTTP server. And so now it's available on port 8080. I'll go back to my browser and again, go to 8080. Yeah, you should see that you are now getting your translations. And if I switch over to French, yeah, it's actually in French now. So uh, again, I can just verify with my form as well. I can go uh, create a post or, and yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's now all translated. So my translation files are being brought in. Uh, what I will say is if you do this change and it still doesn't look changed, just make sure you uh, delete your cache because uh, it could be that the uh, files that are not found are cached. So. Uh, just make sure that you do that prior to uh, assuming that uh, loading the JSON files didn't work. So yeah, so we've gone through uh, the process of building your application for production. We now see that the application runs as just an HTML file with associated CSS and JavaScript. Uh, we figured out how to change our build process a little bit just using a custom gulp task, but not all that custom. It's really based on uh, the other gulp tasks that exist. And uh, yeah, I think we're pretty happy with, uh, with how the deployment process is going to be with our early application. I'd also like to point out that if we go back to our code base, uh, we have within our Aurelia project folder, we have this environment subfolder and you have dev, prod, and stage environment uh, JS files. If you go to each one of them, they're each exporting an object. If you go to the dev.js, it's exporting an object with properties debug is true and testing is true. Uh, if you go to stage, debug is true and testing is false. And if you go to prod or production, debug is false and testing is false. And so what actually happens is whenever we build our application, uh, the command line interface or our gulp tasks are taking this information. And if we close our Aurelia projects folder, in our source folder, we have this environments.js file. It's just gonna put that information in here. And why this is important is because then if we go to our main.js file and we see that we're importing environment from that environment.js file, and we're actually conditionally doing some things based on that information. So we can conditionally use uh, debugging and we can actually 
use this de uh, development logging method if the environment.debug is set to true. And if environment.testing is set to true, we can use the Aurelia testing plugin. So yeah, really you can do any sort of number of conditional things based on the information in your environment variables. And uh, furthermore, you could do something like uh, within your uh, you would want to do this within your Aurelia project folder in dev production or staging. You know, maybe you have a different backend, or I'm sure you have a different backend or API address that you want to hit if you're in dev. And perhaps you're doing some sort of node app development, so you have an API uh, URL or something to that effect, and you know, maybe that's just localhost and uh, 3000 or something. But of course, when you're in production, you know, perhaps it's something else. Perhaps it is a relative URL or, you know, some other actual, uh, actual API dot, you know, dot com or, or whatever it is. But uh, you get the point. You can then use uh, the environment variables that you specify here across your application. And no matter what environment is uh, you're in, you can make sure that you are uh, actually using the right information for that environment.